the sugar. You help me make ATP. Welcome back. In the last video we talked about what enzymes are, what kind of function enzymes have in our body. In this video we're going to go over something which is a bit related, and that something is pH. And I'll discuss and explain how pH is related to enzymes. First I'll read the actual dot point. It says identify the pH as a way of describing the acidity of a substance. So that verb is this identify. So identify just means you need to know that pH is a way of describing the acidity of a substance. And I explain what acidity itself is. So acidity is a measure of hydrogen, or another way of saying it is acidity is a measure of how, how acidic something is. In this case, we've got in a pH scale, so you might have heard of this pH scale before. And this pH scale has numbers from 0 to 14. Now the middle number is 7, and 7 is neutral. Anything below 7 is acidic, anything above 7 is basic, or another word for basic is alkaline. So you might see basic sometimes, sometimes it's called alkaline, but they're both the same thing. So 7 is neutral. If, if we go just a bit below 7, we come into the slightly acidic. So from 3 to 6, this area is a slightly acidic. I'll give you a couple of examples of what, what might be slightly acidic. Then if we go lower, so that holds 0 to 2 area, that is a strong acid or a strongly acidic. Now on the flip side, we have basic, so we have more than 7, so between 7 plus to about 11. This is slightly basic, or slightly alkaline. And anything above, so from 11, 12 to 14-ish, we have high and strongly basic. A couple of things that you might know um, that might be in the fall in these areas. We have 7 is water, itself is, is neutral, pH of 7 usually. Um, things like a banana, for example, banana is acidic, which is quite surprising to some maybe. Banana is acidic. We have lemon juice, which has a pH of around about 3. This is lemon juice. A pH of 1, 0 to 1. This is our hydrochloric acid. We might have dealt with that in year 9 and 10 for chemistry. Then if we go above that, if we go to say about 9, so pH of 9, that's the basic area, slightly basic, that's your baking soda. And as the name suggests, we use that for baking. Um, 10, pH of 10, that's our toothpaste. and pH of about 12 to 13, that's our bleach. So what you can see is there's different things, they all have different types of pHs, uh, but a pH of 7 is neutral, anything below it is acidic, and um, if the closer it is to 0, the more acidic it is, whereas the closer it is to 14, the more basic it is. Now in this case, because we're talking about biology, I want to make sure that you understand what um, the pH scale has to do in terms of biology. So this is the stomach and the small intestine. And what kind of pHs do the stomach and the small intestine have? The stomach has a very low pH, and the pH of the stomach is around about 2 to 3. And one of the reasons why it has such a low pH is because we mentioned earlier hydrochloric acid. The stomach produces hydrochloric acid, which makes it a very low pH. For the small intestine, the pH is quite a bit higher. That's a, it's slightly basic. It can be between 7 to 8 usually for this small intestine. So that comes just after stomach. So this has a, a alkaline or a basic pH, whereas the stomach has a acidic pH. Now the reason why I said that's important is because of something called optimum activity. And you're going to go over this much more in the next couple of videos, but I'll just touch on it in this video. That's all to do with pepsin and trypsin in this case. Trypsin is an enzyme which we can find in our small intestine. And pepsin is an enzyme which we can find in our stomach. Now this kind of curve, you're going to become quite familiar with this curve over the next couple of videos, because this kind of curve we're going to see quite a lot. So pepsin was your stomach one. 
and we have in this case we have pH on the one side and we have relativity on the other side. So the higher it is, the more active the enzyme is, so the faster they work. So this here is the highest point for pepsin, works the best at this level, and here trypsin works the best at this level. So this is its highest, and if we trace that point down to what kind of pH that is, so pepsin, the enzyme pepsin, which is in the stomach, works best at about 2.4, 2.5, so that's 2.5 pH for the stomach, or for the enzyme which is in our stomach. And the small intestine, the enzyme trypsin, which is in our small intestine, works best at around about a pH of 7.8-ish, 7.8 pH-wise. And that makes sense because if you look at the pH in our stomach, that's 2 to 3 pH-wise, and the actual stomach enzyme pepsin is adapted to that same pH. So it works best at that same pH that our stomach usually has. Same with our small intestine. Its enzymes, which are working in the small intestine, have a optimum pH, which is quite similar to that optimum pH of the small intestine. Now, these are important, but another one is also important, which is the pH of our blood. The pH of our blood needs to be, this needs to be actually quite finely balanced and finely controlled. It needs to be at 7.35 pH. Now, if we go too low, so if we go lower than 7.35 pH, something called acidosis, acidosis happens. And if we go above 7.35, a couple of, couple of points above 7.35, something else happens which we call um, alkalosis. So that's two alkalines, so there's two basic alkalosis. So for acidosis, if you just go a couple of points below, these symptoms start appearing. We get headaches, confusion, loss of consciousness, and if we get even lower, coma and death. So if we even go only to about 7.1, we were probably already dead by then. So we have to finally call, control our pH of our blood at that very controlled 7.35 pH. And the reason why I'm also mentioning this is because homeostasis, which will come in a couple of years time, covers that idea of that we keep everything quite finely balanced because if we don't keep things finely balanced, our body starts failing and we start dying. So for this dot point, identify the pH as a way of describing acidity of a substance. All you really need to know is that pH is a way of describing acidity of a substance. The rest is just add information. And obviously because of pH, we all need to know because we need to know of pH because of this pepsin and trypsin these enzymes, which have different optimum pHs. So we need to keep it finely balanced. That was another point I wanted to bring across, just because it'll come up in the next couple of videos as well. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.